All right, good evening, everybody. Hi, uh, welcome to uh, the town board work session and meeting of Tuesday, April 18th. Uh, can I have a motion to open the work session? Motion to open the work session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we're going a little bit of out of, out of order um, tonight. So as part of our work session, because we didn't want to make you guys all sit through our work session, unless you want to, and then we'll, we're happy to, okay, yeah, I didn't think so. So, you know, AP Gov. <laughs> All right, so we um, we have uh, our Greeley Boys uh, Varsity Swim and Dive team here with us today. And the people we have here are those who went to the state championships and won. So we want to say congratulations. Um, I know we have a couple uh, town board members here. I know I'm Juan Holly, who, who also have swimmers, so uh, we know what hard work that is and and how you know diligent you need to be in order to succeed as you you boys have done so we wanted to to say congratulations and to honor you are you are you really on a box of meetings or did you guys do this? <laughs> should be <laughs> so um, we wanted to present some proclamations so um, instead of reading each one they, they all say the same thing um, except they have your names on so I'm gonna read them out loud but I did want to acknowledge just by name um, Hudson Chung who's a senior Jack Cornish who's a junior Eric Engel who's a junior Oliver Engel who's a junior Lawrence Gulata who's a junior Jamie Lynch who's a senior Connor McHugh, who's a junior, Jack Moran, who's a senior, Eric Nadecki, who's a junior, and Trey Schloman, who is a senior. And congratulate the coaches as well for coaching these fabulous boys. So really, congratulations. And I would love to read uh, this presentation and then have you come up and take a picture with all the town board members. So our proclamation today says, whereas, the Horace Greeley High School varsity boys swim and dive team has demonstrated remarkable athleticism, dedication, and teamwork in securing 2023 state championship wins. And whereas the boys have exemplified the highest standards of sportsmanship, discipline, and perseverance throughout the season. And whereas the team has brought pride and honor to our town, school, and community through their outstanding performance and unwavering commitment to excellence. Therefore, be it proclaimed that the town of Newcastle recognizes and celebrates each of you for your incredible achievement, and it has your actual name, in winning a New York State Championship title, and be it further proclaimed that the town expresses its gratitude and admiration for the coaches, parents, and supporters who have played an integral role in the team's success. And finally, be it resolved that the town encourages all members of the community to join in congratulating you boys and the entire Horace Greeley High School varsity boys swim and dive team and recognizing you as a source of inspiration and pride for all residents of Newcastle. So thank you. Why don't we come in front and take a picture because I don't think they can all fit back here. And I'm gonna hand these out, I'm gonna call your names. So, sneak down, down here. So first we have Trey. Trey here? Trey. Thank you. Congratulations. Eric. Not here. Not here. Jack. Congratulations. Jack, Jack Moran. Yes. Okay. Uh, Connor McHugh, congratulations. Jamie Lynch, congratulations. Lawrence, congratulations. Oliver, and Eric. No. Oh, is that all of you? Yes. Oh. <laughs> the other ones are in the pool. Okay. So, do you coaches want to give this to them? I'll we'll take give it to okay. yeah. Jamie. Perfect. All right. So, can we 
Do you want to the town board get in and take a picture? Coaches, you want to come in too? Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. Is anyone planning on swimming in college? Uh, Hopefully. Okay. Where are we going? I'm going. Good luck. I'm going in the middle. God, you feel really short. <laughs> are we all in? See what I mean? Thank you. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank
why those and? It doesn't need to be. Uh, you know, I, I think this was, to my way of thinking anyway, I think you would know it when you saw it. If there was an issue, a statement, a proposed statement on something that was, uh, you know, very sensitive in nature, my thinking would be the supervisor and or liaison could even take that back to the so town and board. Or would be, and or would so be appropriate. What if it's the supervisor in coordination with the liaison? Because I think the liaisons would be the one who day to day is, is you know, enmeshed in, in whatever that committee's doing and, and knows the thoughts and views of that committee. But I think, you know, just as an elected <laughs> official, the supervisor's the one who should make that final determination, but obviously in consultation with the liaison. I, I don't really have that much of an objection to that. I just think it's redundant to have two people and then it causes problems. Yeah, it might become cumbersome if there's too many approvals required for something that we don't expect to really be a problem, but I don't have any strong feelings. I think it should be one person and I think it's appropriate for it to be the supervisor. And if the supervisor is unavailable, then it should be the liaison. I think someone needs, we need a backup person. That's so what if we that's say the supervisor Parenthesis, and if unavailable, the committee lia board liaison. Parenthesis. Yeah, and, and I say that because at times it's a, a statement is time sensitive and sure. You know. Yeah, I, th I think that makes mm -hmm. sense. That makes sense. Perfect. Does it work for everybody? Thanks for that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That was easy. Okay. So now we're moving on to the authorization to accept the proposal for T-shirts for recreation. Good timing. Come on up. So um, we we know you sent out obviously an RFP. Um, the reason why we didn't approve it last week is we had questions. You're so far away. Come up. Um, I know we had questions on some of the bids, and one of the companies um, was. Is, a, is on the New York State list of preferred providers, I think, for um, you know, differently abled individuals. And so you know, my preference would have been, if we were able to, to award it to that company. But I wanted to get your thoughts on that, if we should go back to them, if it was significantly, you know, it was higher. So you know, what, what your thoughts were on how we, and, and Ed's yours too as to you know what the possibility was there and you know maybe do we go back and say hey your bid was significantly higher can you come down i don't know if we're we can do that uh, my so sense Christina is that they would spoke today and um the, the, the issue a couple of issues one is that i, I understand this is time sensitive and, and it was a desire to actually see this approved last week so i don't know how much time and we're not the board's not meeting next week so i don't know if we have the luxury of that time um, the other is that we did confirm that spectrum is a prefer, preferred vendor mm -hmm. um, but uh, the prices uh, and i've looked at the spreadsheet uh, that was prepared um, they are not only higher they're significantly higher than the next uh, lowest uh, bidder, um, or quote, these are quotes. It wasn't, um, it's not a bidding process, or even an RFP, it was a request for quotes. Yeah. Um, it's about a seven or eight thousand dollar contract, right? So, um, you're not required to reach, um, uh, e even a preferred, you would use a preferred source vendor when they're 15 percent or higher on price. So, do we have the ability to? go back to them and say, if you can meet the price of the lowest bidder, we will utilize you as a preferred provider and, and you know, approve that, assuming they meet that, and if not, we go with the, the next. I don't know if we have the time to, do we have, do you have two or three I imagine you can give them a call out? tomorrow and you'd have an answer. You, you won't get them approved. No, no, if we could approve it tonight saying if they, if they meet that price, then it would be them. And if not, you'll go with the, with the, well, we said we would. Right. Is, and approve is that, that tonight. Is that legally permissible yeah, based on bidding? This is a bidding. So that, that's yeah, why I want to make that clear. These are quotes. So we can go back to somebody who submitted a quote and ask them to drop in their pencil. That's fine in this situation. Okay. okay. 
So as long as we approve it tonight, subject to because they need to be able to order the t-shirts. Yeah, I'd like to be able to give them a, a chance um, mm -hmm. because the work that they do is admirable. Yeah, and they're a preferred provider. It's a lot of you know disabled, differently abled uh, you know workers. So I'd like to do that if we can. So and, and just to be clear, so the board is aware, if uh, for a preferred source um, vendor who submits a quote that is competitive on price, as long as that uh, vendor is able to uh, fill the requirements, mm -hmm. the town's required to use that vendor. It's not, oh, okay. it's not, wouldn't it be nice if, no, you actually are required. Okay. okay. So let's go back to them tomorrow and say, you know, or today, but I, it's going to be too late, um, and say, you know, can you meet this quote? Yours was... 20% higher than, you know, everyone else, can you meet this? And if so, you you will have the contract. It's already been approved. Does that work? And now, if, now if what if not, you come back and say no? Then we're we, we go with the, 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 the recommended. recommended. Yeah. Then we'll go with then the recommended if they okay. can. And that's that's the way the resolution so, will read tonight. Yeah. Yes. And, and let me suggest that we add in something to the effect of uh, substantially. Um, there are eight or so different categories of items, and um, so we're comparing prices like eight times. Right. And in some cases, the prices were actually kind of substantially close. Similar, in other right. cases, they were way off. Right. So I don't want to Can miss you it. Can you get it in the aggregate? You know, something. Just build in a little wiggle room. Yeah. I would say in the aggregate. Okay. Right? The aggregate. Do we care if this shirt costs more if then this one costs significantly so. less as long as no. the... The there was one that outlay. just stood out a lot, like the basketball one. They added on like a five dollar charge per shirt for putting a number on the back, so that brought up to like a twelve dollar shirt. And we know we have to order like three hundred of them, so mm -hmm. that's where you see that big, right? Where no one else added that kind of cost. So, mm -hmm. okay, so would we see substantial more? Okay, so can you mark that up? Yeah. Okay, Ed's gonna mark it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Good. On board with that? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Great. Thanks, Christine. We're moving right yeah, along. So Thank you. Ed, Ed will... I don't have. I don't have a copy of it. Okay. So contracts. next, we are going to talk in work session about the uh, roof for the Chapel Court Performing Arts Center. Jill, do you want to talk about that one? Right. So, um, in your packet, loosely. Um, is Rob Sheen. I just mm -hmm. want to make sure everybody's in the back. Thank you. I just want to make sure everybody had it. Ed, do you have a copy? Yes. Okay. Do you have an extra one, Jill? Of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two seconds. Just get there. No, I don't think so. It's separate. This is what Rob had sent out. I didn't know. Yeah. the packet, so if you'll put it in here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, Bar Carrier Commissioner of Public Works took and issued um, a bid for the purchase and installation of the roof of the Chapel Bluff Performing Arts Center. Um, the board was aware, or the town was aware when we obtained this property that it had been, um, there were substantial capital improvements that we were going to have to make. And one of them on a 30 some odd year old building was going to be the roof. Um, we, um, perhaps staff didn't get quite the sticker shock that maybe some of the newer board members did with the roof because we had just recently redone the roof on the community center. So we had a general idea of what roofs Can you remind were. everyone what that price was, cost was? It was just shy of five hundred thousand. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. I'm not sure exactly, but I think it was just short of five hundred thousand for that roof. Um, and if so, anyone's ever done their own roof, it's not cheap. Well, when you when you're dealing with larger big buildings, this is what happens. Um, so Bart is actually so uh, we received um, six uh, bids. Um, for the roof, Bart is recommending uh, that we go with armor type construction. The amount of three hundred eighty thousand seven hundred dollars. Um, we um, are 
recommending not to go with the architectural shingles. And more importantly, we're actually um, not recommending to the board that we go with um, an increased insulation. Um, it's actually twofold, the reason why. Uh, number one, the payback period exceeds 50 years. And secondly, um, the substantial weight that comes with the, um, the, the added insulation, and that would preclude our ability to take and install solar on the roof going forward. Um, this building is primed for the installation of solar. Um, it's got a nice big roof that's not obscured by any trees, um, gets sun for most of the day. Um, and so uh, it, it was certainly something that, that the uh, that staff was considering when they when we were doing the roof bid initially. Um, and that would, would you want to explain why it's not in the same bid? Oh gosh, yeah. So it's not. I apologize. Thank you. Um, it's not in the same bid because um, it, the vendors are apples and oranges. So suppliers that do roofs are not the same people who take and install the solar. And we actually had tried to combine bid for the Millwood Water Treatment Plant roof, only to find out that the hard way. So the um, the responses that we got were um, wildly varied, and uh, we had a roofing contractor that wasn't familiar with solar, and a solar contractor that wasn't familiar with, with just general roofing. And so we learned the hard way that these are two completely different vendors and we needed to bid, bid them separately. So lesson learned when it came to the Chapel Hall Performing Arts Center, simply uh, bidding the roof. We also were lucky enough to receive a $125,000 grant. So um, Assembly Burdick. Burdick. yes, from, from Assemblyman Burdick, who's just been fabulously supportive of us. Um, and so that will go a long way to defraying the cost of this roof. Um, I appreciate the fact that there are significant capital improvements that have to be made to this building. Um, the roof is one where if we um, decide to wait on it, um, we are very concerned that continued damage to the building will result. Um, we're especially concerned about the electrical systems. Um, and at the end of the day, the roof is a must have, not a nice to have. So if we delay awarding the project, it will be a matter of having to pay for a new roof along with whatever damage to electrical or interior systems result. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question about the solar panels? Sure. How realistic is, like, do we have a time frame for when we would want to do that? And um, do we have a cost? We don't. We don't okay, have a cost. So it's like a kind of a, a little bit of It would a, be a, a nice waste. to have, but... And but we're not help. seriously considering it right now. Um, I, well, I think we are. We but. actually are. We, we are going to have to take and make improvements to the HVAC system. So that would go hand in hand with us exploring solar. And there are grants and incentives and a lot of different things that we can probably take advantage of for solar. But that has to be looked at separately. But but the board should be aware that, the, that we have not done significant capital improvements that have to be made to this building. You know, Beyond the roof and the HVAC, what else are we talking about? Um, so there is drainage that needs to be done around the building. When, uh, like a sump run. pump situation? So we've got a sump pump that's running in the basement of the uh, Chapel Hall Performing Arts Center but at present. Um, Toll Brothers was going to help with that. They're not. Really? I thought when we looked at drainage for their piping. They're not going to help with that. Hmm. Okay, that's Disappointing. Good. Okay, so there's a pump, sump pump downstairs. There's a sump pump downstairs mm -hmm. that... Um, because of some drainage pipes that were damaged in the course of Toll Brother construction um, is now required in the basement of the Chapel Hall Performing Arts Center. It feeds into a pit. That pit used to be dry. Now it's wet, and the sump pumps are running. Um, Why are we letting them get away with that, though? If it's damage that they cause, because we can't prove it's their damage. We don't know what pipe. We don't know where the pipes came from. We have been unable to discern where the damage actually was. So we've got pipes that are running into the building, but we don't know where they came from exactly, and they go too far out for us to be able to mm -hmm. locate them. So it's not like just to like so sneaking out. So reasonable minds would say, given that they're digging up the entire property, and all of a sudden, once they started digging, we had a big leak. I don't know, um, council, would... Devaney, I, I, I know you're busy. <laughs> 
writing up, but yeah. I'm sorry, what was the question? The, the question was, since we didn't have water in the basement before Toll Brothers was operating, and then we have water so in the basement though. after Toll Brothers. We don't believe in coincidences. <laughs> and, uh, we, we, we did work that problem, uh, or I should say Bob Scioli did work that problem, and um, I, we have some theories, mm -hmm. um, but um, we can have this discussion um, offline. Uh, but uh, we don't have any uh, resolution. Okay. We can talk about it in the executive session. So going back to, I, I just want to understand, you know, how much money we need to invest in CHAPAC to make sure it's operational. So we need a sump pump. We need a roof. Which is, sorry. Okay. We're going to need to replace the HVAC system. Yes. Is there more? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, so the, the sump pump, it's not just a matter of the sump pump, there's drainage that has to be... Um, French drain, maybe? A, a curtain drain that goes around the building, but yes, so, there, there, so there's trenching and there's drainage that has to be done. Um, there is, we will, um, Toll Brothers will be doing rough um, grading of the parking lot. There's a, there, there will be constructed a handicapped parking lot. Um, if you're looking at the building, it's on the right-hand side. It's where the Secret Service building used to be. Okay. So there's handicapped parking lot that's going to go there. Uh, Toll Brothers will do the rough grading for us, but not the final paving. So that will need to be done at all. That's probably $200,000. So the, the back of the envelope right now is three to 500000 for the paving parking yeah. lot and the drainage and oh and the drainage program. Program. Okay. yeah okay it wasn't just part i need, didn't think i was that far off okay well, what, what yeah. is the total number for all all the capital improvements oh god okay. including the roof we just want to probably, probably about a million dollars, about a million dollars. And, and how urgent is some of this work obviously you said the roof is the roof and, is I mean, we don't have estimates on the hvac right now i know that the air condition <laughs> is part of it but but uh we are, had originally anticipated replacing the boiler with the gas boiler but right um, we may or may not still do that. I don't know. Right. And, and what are we getting back for this million dollars? Getting back? We're getting I a mean, building. Yeah, we, we really need, Have we budgeted need for to any think of about this? this? Well, um, it's not. So a lot of this will end up being capital, and it would come to you to approve it. And, and just to be clear, these are capital improvements that are must the roof at a minimum. Right, the roof the is roof a must-have. The roof is a must-have. The HVAC will at some point be a must-have. It's a 30-plus-year-old building, so um, it, it's inefficient at best right now. and it, it um, It's operational still, so I, I, somewhat. I feel like we're, like we're kind of looking at these things um, as one-offs without looking at the bigger picture of, of the building, what role it's playing, mm -hmm. and I don't know if maybe we directs the investment so i've looked at the bigger picture because just i've been involved in it for a very for a long time um so not everything in our town is monetized right we spend a lot of money on our parks we don't charge everyone as they walk into the parks we just spent you know five hundred thousand dollars on the roof of the community center we don't really make that back there are a lot of things that we have in our town that are for the benefits of our residents we have plays that go on there. We have recitals that go on there. We have, and you know, we allow for there's theater that's going on there. We utilize it for overflow for concerts in the park when we need rain dates. We're hoping that we actually can also get a grant to put a generator on there so we do not in this town have one warming center. That would be a warming center. We can play, have movies. We can utilize that for a lot of things. So to me, that's an asset that we would not want to give up. I, so, I mean, respectfully, I don't really see the Performing Arts Center being quite in the same lane as the community center or the parks. I mean, the parks, I don't have to go buy a ticket when I want to go for a walk through a park. The community center is available for, for use. Um, I can't really just be like, oh, I want to go put my kid on stage and use something at the chapel. I mean, I guess I could, but it's cost prohibitive. I just feel like it's kind of in a different bucket as far as amenities. And maybe somebody can tell me, is this a common 
amenity for a town to own and run. It just seems a little also out of our no, wheelhouse. No, so that's the, that's the other thing I didn't finish. Oh, so sorry. Ultimately, you know, we got, we got very behind because of COVID, right? That it wasn't functional for two, at least two years. Um, ultimately, I think the goal is, and we've been working with the Friends of the Chapel Performing Arts Center, and they're the fundraising arm of this, and they've been putting on shows, but they're also planning to, to, to have fundraisers and monetize so they can hopefully pay for other capital improvements needed at the, theater, at the theater. But ultimately, the goal would be, at least in my view, to rent this out to another company because we're not in the business of running a theater. There are things we do. We run children's programming there that we actually don't charge people to come to. And we've had phenomenal shows that we've put on there, like the Paperback Players and Bossy Frog Band. And we've done a lot of shows there that we don't charge any of our residents for. Um, the library uses it. But ultimately, other than things that we run it, we're not in the business of running a theater. Um, and unless we significantly expanded our, you know, rec department and and had people dedicated to running a theater, which we don't, I don't see how that's going to be attainable. So my thought was, and I've been working with the friends, to, and they're developing, that's why I didn't want to have this discussion yet, because it's a little premature, because they're actually working on it right now, a plan um, where we would actually lease the theater to let's say the friends group and they may hire they may work with another group to who's more of a theater manager for let's say i don't know what the number is let's say it's five thousand dollars a year and then we would get a portion of ticket sales as a facilities fee because the building's still ours we own the building but they would essentially run it and we would figure out how it works in terms of they would be in charge of paying utilities and everything else on the building and actually run the theater like a theater. But there are, you know, North Salem has a theater, Yorktown has a theater, uh, Irvington has a theater, and they that's how they're operating. And that's ultimately the goal where I would like to see us operating, but where we would still retain use for a certain number of days because we utilize it. That's our, that's our rain date for our summer concerts, and we utilize it for town a model, meetings, things yeah, like that. Yeah, a model that. like that sounds like it makes more sense but what i'd really rather than just be be looking at a group proposal and knowing that that's going to cost a lot of money and there's other things on the plate i feel more comfortable looking at these things as a whole like what is our line of sight to transitioning what does the revenue upside potentially look like for us will we be able to cover the cost or at least cover an an amount that is acceptable and reasonable for us as a community to offer that um, amenity. I just, I don't feel like I have enough picture or enough um, plan to really feel comfortable with the amount of needs we have. I agree with Holly. It seems like there's a long punch list of things that need to happen to make Chat Pack operational at this point. Um, you know, it's operational right now. Yeah. For now. For now, right? But if the roof, if they uh, don't hold, fix the hold, roof. Hold, no, no, John, we're not. Yeah, I'm no, working. I understand. No, no, John, I'm, this I'm is a work I'm session. We're not point. having public comment right now. So you should, not, I'm not you should doing sit this for a couple public minutes. Comment. When you I'm should talking sit, about John, the Terry sit down. Music hall. I, I think John, the board needs to John, have John, I just like to sit for a few minutes. We're going to have the discussion and then I will open it up. But right now, we need to. I haven't had an opportunity to say anything. So we will definitely do that. So, John, we won't hear you. We've already lost a year on this. Okay. I love the idea of having a community theater. That sounds wonderful. It sounds like it would be very enriching for the community. However, we have to be fiscally responsible. That's our job as the board. This seems like there's a lot of things that we need to do to make sure Chapac stays operational. A roof, it sounds like we're in dire need. If the roof collapses and there's electrical issues and it's not operational anymore, right? Um, so I guess in order for me to consider how much we want to invest, I need more information too, like Holly's saying. I'd like to know, uh, do we have an interested party? Is there an opportunity to privatize part of this? Is yes, friends is. of going to, how much are they going to raise? You know, I, I need more. I need more information. I need to see a calendar of events. What do they have on tap? What's coming up? Um, you know, what are the numbers you can go from on the website past? And see there's a calendar. No, no, no. I, I'm but, sorry. I included it in here. 
Thank you. Pa past events, how how well attended were they? What kind of revenue did we generate? You know, things like that because we're asking, it, it's a lot of money. Honestly, and I, it's a beautiful facility. I have been there for several events. I love that we have it in the community, but again, we have a duty to the town. We're asking for a lot of money and I wanna make sure that if we're going to shell out a million dollars in capital improvements, there, there has to be an end in sight and there has to be a game plan. So I don't exactly. want to do it piecemeal, a roof here, HVAC here. I want there to be a comprehensive plan for what we're going to do for Chapac. And I think we have a better chance of success um, overall if, if we can look at it with, you know, a five to ten year plan. Well, we're working on that. And then it's premature again because we got pushed back a number of years because of COVID. But that's what's being worked on. And I been speaking with Michelle, they're hoping to have something to us within the next month. No, I mean, that's great, but uh, we're still being asked about a half a million dollars. So well, look, a roof is a roof. Even if you wanted to sell the property, you have to redo the roof. And well, I, I would I, never I, advocate I wanna, selling this. Yeah, I, I just want to say, that these, are, these are my concerns. I mean, obviously, we have to be fiscally responsible. We're dealing with, this is, these are taxpayer dollars Correct. that we're talking it's about. real money. Obviously. And... Um, I think, Holly, when you were saying it's not the same as going to a park, I, I think, you know, the idea is about what is a town function. And while I understand that other towns have theaters and they're a great asset, that is not normally considered a town function. So if the total cost is in the ballpark of a million dollars, and we think about renting this property to another entity who would be making a profit. I'm just concerned essentially that it's almost a gift of public funds where we spend a million dollars and then allow a company to come in and make a profit mm -hmm. while we get rent um, but we own to a, a degree, but to what end? To what end that we own building that is a theater as a town? You know, if it were an operational building and we, you know, the expenses were much less and then we would rent it, then, you know, we might be talking about a different proposition. But the reality is that we would have to put in a million dollars into this property in order to have a viable theater to rent out. And that, that is what we have to think about. We have to think about as a town, what is our responsibility to our taxpayers? Um, and not every asset, such as a theater, has to be owned by a town. You, you look at Jacob Burns and the value that it's brought to Pleasantville, and it's certainly not owned by the town, you know, and, and yet that is, um, it's been a great so, asset to that so, town. Uh, uh, so, hold on, please. But, yeah, go ahead, Jim. So when we uh, approved the taking of this, was it 16? 2016? No, no, no. It wasn't that long ago. I thought it was. Well, I think was, it, was on the board. When did we take it? was an offer of dedication. I think it was 17, 17 that was accepted. And then the deed um, was recorded in December of last year. Right. So one of the concerns that were raised at the time, I know, um, was this exact issue, although maybe phrased differently. Uh, and to Lisa's point, Rob, I think made a fair point at the time, which was, you know, generate dollars on everything and every asset in the community. Um, we do have a fiduciary responsibility, but at the same time, there's other responsibilities. Our, our only responsibility is not solely that of tax dollars, although that is certainly one of the top ones as well. Uh, I would imagine, um, that I would imagine there, there's cultural, educational, although we're not the school district, um, quality of life, there's a lot of different things that we do for the community. Uh, one would argue that when we try to help firefighters and first responders, for example, that's to a detriment to us financially, but nonetheless, we do it. Granted, it's not to the same degree. Um, to everyone's point here, I also, though, believe that there's a real concern with the ongoing costs and just breaking down some of these numbers, and I am by no means a mathematician. Um, they have, you know, steadily, we'll say, when I say lost money, um, you look at the average expense, which is right already written out for you in the total uh, revenue, uh, it, it's, it doesn't work. The question becomes, when does it work? And then the next question we have to ask ourselves is, is what are we willing to accept if it doesn't work? Meaning, is it worth the price of a couple thousand dollars a month to the tune of $24,000 a year, $30,000 a year at a quote-unquote loss? 
Um, but that still doesn't get us, because we're getting enriched by other means, I think that's a fair question, because I do believe as much as we are fiduciaries, we have other responsibilities as well. We do need a plan. We do need to understand the real numbers. We do need to find out sort of resources. And, and to your point moments ago, we don't have to be the ones that have it. I don't think anyone, hopefully, is not advocating just getting rid of it, because I think it is an asset. But we have to figure out the best means to maintain it, enrich our community, generate dollars for people who want to come into our community, invest in our community, and also while keeping the dollars at a reasonable amount. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to decide that sooner rather than later, because these numbers are, are certainly real and significant dollars. One thing I just, and Christine, it's actually good that you're here. So, you know, I've, I've also heard complaints from residents that say, you know what, there are kids in this town that don't like sports. And we have a ton of programs that we offer for kids who want to play basketball and soccer and baseball, but we don't have that many for kids who are artistic and want to put on plays. So we have offered as part of the camps, our town camp, the utilization of chat pack for those kind of activities, um, which I know a lot of people love because they have kids that don't want to run around outside. They have different interests, and I think that's something we need to take into account as well. And we have been utilizing it for that. I have a friend that would disagree with that, and I'm, I'm sort of I'm not on the fence here, but there's other means to achieve that without uh, the cost of these numbers to the town. We can still achieve those goals and ends. So. I, for one, think that we, if there's a roof issue, we, we've accepted it. We have to fix the roof. You can't let it just cave in on itself. <laughs> I mean, it has to be resolved. We just need to understand what's the plan, how, how is it going to generate dollars. It doesn't have to be in the positive, where we get other dollars from, and what's the long-term you know, plan. What's the long-term plan? And I can tell you that I've been speaking with the friends of the Chapco Performing Arts Center, which is a 501c3, and they're the kind of a fundraising arm of this. And they're fully expecting that they're raising money to help with the HVAC and everything else. So, you know, to me, we have to repair the roof. This is significantly less money than we just spent on the roof at, at the community center, which is a significantly smaller building. And to me, this has to be done. And I personally think that this is a, a great community asset and I would hate to ever see this go. Um, but I do understand that we're not in the business of running a theater, and that's why I've been looking at, at opportunities to, to monetize this where we still get money. Now, don't if many of you might remember, we actually had started this process with the Westchester Broadway Theater um, last year or the year before, maybe. And um, for various reasons, that did not work out because they kind of imploded. But, you know, so it's not to say that we haven't been looking at this option for a while. We just need to find the right partner to do that with, and I certainly think we should. But I also want it to be a partner that's going to allow us access to the building, not someone who are basically just saying, here you go, this is all you. Because it is a community asset, and I want to make sure there are shows. We offer free tickets to seniors. We've offered free tickets to employees. We've offered free programming for children and the library uses it. It's definitely a, an, an asset for the community. So, I, you know, I think that we need to figure out our best partner that's going to allow us to use it for what we need to use it for. Um, and also, you know, limiting our, our monetary exposure and being able to put on great programming that, frankly, is a benefit for our community. Yeah, and, and I don't, I, I hope I did not imply that I don't think that it's an asset to the community or could be. Um, but again, you know, these are real dollars and they are, in some cases, very large. And it sounds like you have some information that maybe we haven't gotten yet about what a plan might look like. So I think that that's a conversation that we really need to continue. We do. The, I mean, the roof, it, I mean, it sounds like we have to protect our asset with a roof. And that's, well, I have some questions separately about the roof. I think that there's a really important piece we do need to pick up, which is mm -hmm. what is that plan? What role do we want it to play in the community and how do we achieve that? Um, to, to make it um, a, a worthwhile asset instead of a drain. Yeah, I, I think we definitely need to do the roof. 
I think we need to hear the plan. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we have to stay open minded and understand how we can protect this asset of the community um, and what structure is most beneficial to, to run it. And I'm not sure that the current structure is, but it could be. I just think that we, like Holly said, I don't think we have all of the facts and I'm very interested in um, hearing from the friends and hearing your plan, but I'd like that to happen very soon. Well, they're working on that now. It, we were going to meet in May um, to go over this. Uh, that's why this was a little premature. But one, one minute. But we, just so you know, there's also somebody who, who has made an offer to donate a minimum of $300,000 to this theater. Um, but they don't want to do that. I heard this in the last week, having listened to this town board, who they think now wants to sell this oh. asset, they're not going no, to give. No, no, no. Well, let me finish speaking. But it's been on, they saw I it mean, on Facebook. So they're concerned that they want to make sure that this is an asset that's going to stay with the town before they're going to, you know, Lisa, give, we can't, wait, wait, let me just finish speaking. Hearing something like Vicky, this. And I want to finish speaking. To curtail I'm, our going, discussion. I'm not curtailing your discussion. Yeah. What I said was there's somebody who wanted to donate $300,000, but they want to make sure that this asset is going to stay with the town and not be sold, which is why I wanted to have a discussion in May that's a little more fulsome about you know what the projection is going forward and get a commitment that this is actually an asset for the community that's going to stay within the community and then I think we have the ability to get a significant inflow of, of cash and the friends group wants to you know name the, the seats and donate and they can get it they think another two hundred thousand dollars at a minimum from that so there are things that can be done as long as they know that this theater is going to remain in the town it doesn't mean we shouldn't have the discussion. We could, and we're already planning to have a much larger discussion, excuse me, in, in May or June about this. Um, I'm just saying that the, it's not that there's no money potentially that can come to this theater. People are very interested in it, um, members of our community who are very involved in the arts. Um, and I think that it's going to be part of that discussion as to how the Friends Group is really going to be able to to kind of monetize this. Well, and I, I would hope that someone who's thinking about putting $300,000 into this building would want to see what the plan is mm -hmm. for operations and management. Um, so, I mean, I think that we're all, we all want the, the same thing, but mm -hmm. I think that we all need more information. Agreed. But I don't think, I think today the discussion was really about the roof and yeah, are we so, going to protect our asset or not. So I have some questions about the roof if you want me to go to those. Sure. <laughs> uh, does the, did this roof come with a warranty? Yeah, um, 30 years or so? Yeah, I don't have details on the warranty or, wow. or frankly the, the... And does it come with a maintenance plan because that's pretty essential with roofs? I that have, you have a maintenance plan. Yeah, we'll, we'll, really? Yeah. Uh, from what I know of facilities. Um, yeah, that's my experience yeah, as well. Absolutely. A warranty um, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but different from uh, a flat roof like what's on the school building. Um, I know that we did not have a maintenance plan that we were shipped we Yeah, I've never heard of that. I've heard of warranties, but not maintenance plans. It's not something that generally breaks. Another question I had was, do we know if there are any potential issues that may be encountered, such as asbestos or anything like that, yeah. given the age of this building? Yeah, we've, we've already resolved that. We've, uh, actually, yeah, we have a vendor. Have yeah, a there vendor. is asbestos removal required. As we part of doing the roof? Yeah, it was already included. But as it's within this boat, or is that um, separate? It's a separate vendor. Yeah, it was, did we not approve it? A couple yeah. weeks ago, yeah, I think Bob I thought did. we did. Yeah, um, we Bob when we set up the capital project originally, it was included in the original estimate, the asbestos quote. How much is that? Could you refresh my memory? It was about nine thousand dollars. I was going to say right like under that. ten. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, well that's not as bad as I, I thought it could be. I just have a couple quick, quick more quick remarks. Uh, whoever would say that there was a concern or an issue about this town board wanting to sell. I think this is the first time we've had an open conversation about 
about the chat pack. So yeah. it's kind of a, a ludicrous statement to make, whether it's been on social media or otherwise. Uh, who would make such a conclusion without any information whatsoever? So I'm a little disappointed if someone would make that statement. Number two, I think it sounds like there's a commitment from this town board to figure out one way or another to make it work in some capacity. Um, however, it may be to move this forward. So to also assert, and this is not exactly what you were saying, that we don't want to see it succeed. I don't think that's a fair statement either. You're not really saying that, so yeah, I'm not, not uh, attributing that to you. Um, you know, when I look at the numbers, one last thing I would add is this year, we're now in mid-April, for some reason we've only generated $5,225. Last year, nearly $70,000. The year before, over $36,000. So I'm just curious, maybe they can answer that as well. Why there's been such a drop in the revenue? Yeah, I can speak to that, Jeremy. Um, so number one, last year, going back to last year, that was a big lump sum. I think about forty-five thousand of that came from the evening out um, when they had uh, when they leased it for. That was the Westchester Road. Several weeks. Yeah. Um, so that that was one big lump sum. These are our piecemeal events that are coming in. Uh, I believe there have been some events that have been run that we are yet to see the revenue from. Uh, so I've reported what is in um, what's been reported to me and what I've accounted for in my accounting system. So I think there's stuff out there that we're waiting to hear back from Lisa and from the friends group. Not Lisa Tizzo. Lisa Tizzo. Yeah, Lisa yeah. Tizzo. Well, I want to bottom line, I want to see it succeed. How that happens in what form, I don't know. And no one should take anything, at least from my statements, uh, to the contrary. If I may, may I add a uh, data point? So when the offer of dedication was negotiated back in 2016-17, part of it uh, was that if, um, if and when a deed was accepted and recorded, that the deed contained what's called a right of reverter. And essentially what it says is that the uh, building is not used as a performing arts center for some period of time. And I it may be 12 months, don't quote me on that. But if it essentially goes dark continuously for a period of time, uh, the, the donor, uh, I guess in this case uh, it would be Toll Brothers now, would have the right to take it back. So there's no, unless they decline to exercise that right, um, there's really not a scenario here where the town would sell it. Um, maybe we would get the property back, um, but um, only after giving them the right to have it first. Oh, we could lease it. Uh, to a to, a to a theater, right? To, theater, theater. Right. to you know, the, the use has to stay what it's continuous. What its, what its intended use Correct. is. Is is there a definition around what performing arts center? Uh, like are lectures? There is lectures would be included. Okay. Um, I, I can I'll bring that language to you, but but you know, essentially, it's a performing arts center, including but not limited to. Yeah, That's and you know, I think another kind of data point is that it also brings vitality to the town and you know someone's coming to a show they're going to go for dinner or maybe they're going to go out for ice cream afterward or maybe they're going to come early and go shopping in town so the thought was also that it's bringing vitality to our town and bringing new people you know I was at something there recently and I met a number of people who live nowhere near here and they came for that show and they said oh we you know we drove around town and what a great town and we're gonna come back so it's it's also a way to bring vitality and new new people and new money um, into our town so but I agree you know I don't think any I think we're all on the same page that we you know want a different plan for this and you know I've certainly been working on that with some groups we thought we had something um, with evening out or Westchester Broadway theater that didn't happen so we're exploring other options and certainly it did get behind because of COVID um, and certainly the friends group knows that their responsibility is to also be raising money for the theater for capital improvements as well as programming so I think um, and they are working now on that plan for the theater because ultimately I, I don't want to do a, an analysis of where it's going to go because I don't want to run it as a town. I want to lease it to another company that's going to run it and um, and make it into a better amenity, frankly, than, than we could do on our own. So that's where, where I think we are, and I think we're all on the same page for that. That being said, I think we need to redo the roof. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I think we've all agreed on 
certainly on redoing the roof. And um, again, just seeing what is the best way to structure this asset of ours and putting all the plans on the table. Sounds like plans have been talked about for quite some time, but I've never seen any. Because you weren't so on I the board. Think, yeah, well, I've been on the board for, this is uh, a yeah. year and a half. So we talked about, I don't think you were on the board yeah. when we were talking with Westchester Broadway Theater. Um, and we haven't, I've been speaking with the Friends group since then. So, um, and then before that, yeah. unfortunately, we had a pandemic that we're still in. So um, that was, that was the issues. But um, John, do you want to come up and say something? Uh, first, and, first and foremost, um, there is an enormous body of different groups in this town that would certainly use utilize this even as is without fixing the roof. And um, I just talked to two uh, in the last week who have tried to do events there and would have done them, but nobody got back to them. So what I am saying is this. I was involved in fundraising in this area. I did it for a lot of different organizations. And going back uh, to New York City, Boston, other communities, I've worked with architects to do this. I've done it. Uh, we had a situation, for example, um, Taconic Opera was going to put um, a series of, of, uh, of things here. Nobody got back to them. The wonder about a place like this is what, what can be created. Um, in New York City, we had a facility called the City Center. Okay, that eventually um, became a precursor to some of the, the things at Lincoln Center, but they were right there. I was in New York City and worked on, you know, when they were doing Carnegie Hall, and we were able easily to raise the funds for this. Uh, in the case of uh, Carnegie Hall, I hope secure a, a $750,000 grant from uh, the National Endowment for this. Um, it's the center of this community. It's ideal. It has been misused. It was misused by Reader's Digest. It was misused later. It's nothing like it can be and should be. Um, even on Sunday, it was a group that would gladly but that group's name is the Hutton Corral. Um, they would be there. Um, what is necessary and what can be done and what can be made to do it. I think we're doing a little backwards here because you're worried about the cost before you got the project. But this is a key resource for not only the town, not only the county of Westchester, but on the East Coast. Um, just let me give you uh, another example. When Broadway shows open, they like to put them in places like this to run X number of weeks to work out the bugs before they move into more expensive um, venues. The venue itself is very unique as a meeting site, just for meetings just to sell it for meetings from corporations and things. Enormous opportunity. This is the kind of venue that I used to rent when I was working for News Corp and to put things together. Um, so what I would counsel you wonderful folk on is basically not to look at just the debit column but start with the credit column and see what we can do to, to, to build it. I personally have, uh, people will contribute an enormous amount of money here. We would, would be glad to do it, and I would be one of those people. Uh, I'm not gonna give you 300,000, forget it. Uh, but to run it, to keep it going, 
absolutely. We can do this, I can do this at Carnegie Hall. I can do this for a whole bunch of other places that I did in Boston and other communities. You, you have the ability to do it. It has been so frustrating, however, for somebody like me who is, I've been asking people, um, when can we get this done? How can we get it done? How can I at least, how can I bring this group in? Will somebody give me a key so I can show them that, no, you're not going to get an orchestra pit here, but we have this. Oh yeah, you do have a piano. No, we don't have a piano. Yeah, you do. Went to an event, literally on Sunday, where the fellow that was running the event brought in a harpsichord and a piano for three different things. It was on him, not 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 us. But it's amazing what you what, what you all can uh, achieve. It's a great asset. It's a it's a fabulous thing, and it could be the center of uh, uh, of the, the uh, this area and of uh, and of the town. It's an enormous asset. Do not let it go. So I don't mean to carry on. I've got a long meeting today, but please, money is not going to be a problem. And I'm telling you, I've got three organizations. I asked, you know, three people or uh, three different organizations, and three organizations were interested. That's a, it's not a, it's not a tough sell, but we got to have a product to sell them. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other thoughts? Okay. All right. So, um, Jill, do you want to move on to the administrative items? Yeah. Um, does the board have any questions on the administrative items? We can just go through them quickly. It's a retroactive. I don't know if my microphone's working or not, but. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, yeah. great. Um, retroactive appeal uh, approval for the payment of claims, adoption of monthly reports from March 2023, and adoption of minutes from March 2023. We've got authorization to obtain uh, bids for the purchase of and installation of highway maintenance materials. We had a number of non extended contract items. We've got authorization to purchase two valves for the Millwood Board of Treatment Plant from Dezurek. Uh, we have a couple of uh, vehicle auction results, Jeremy. Where is it at? <laughs> what um, you call it? You know what? I will get you what the total is. Okay. Rob? We'll get it. I don't know if the total I think one of them was the old senior boss was. <laughs> no, I'm talking about total. No, no, total for everything, like over the, the years. Oh, over the, the years. Oh. Yeah, no, no, no I didn't I have this. Yeah. Yeah. Really? No. <laughs> Um, we're going to try to piggyback um, onto another state contract uh, for um, a surface treatment. Um, it's for Hades Cross and Trip. Um, I hate to use the term oil, chip and oil, but it's um, an, an alternate to um, a, a straight asphalt. Um, it's called those like roads floor are just mat a, or something. Mm -hmm. It's called like floor mat yeah, or yeah, something. Fiber, fiber. Yeah. yeah. Um, something new or? We can try it, see how it works. Oh, um, wait, but do, do we have, um, have any other towns used that? Because, you know, the chip and oil was such a great no, success. No, no, yeah, well, it, so, um, I to, yeah, so they've had it in the town of Thompson. They've had it in a couple of places upstate, um, and that's what we're doing it for. Um, it's the same process as oil and chip, just with the addition of glass fiber strands for added strength. Uh, we actually were going to try to do it last year, and we just ran out of time. And we've spoken with them, and Thompson yeah. Town Thompson is happy with it. Yep. Okay. It's a it's a different type of road surface, but for those roads where you really, um, because of drainage, because of the the fact that they're very narrow and windy, you really don't want cars picking up heavy duty speeds on them. Mm -hmm. um, so, Vicky will attest to. I will. I don't have to get personal here, but I live on one of those streets, and yeah. you definitely don't want cars speeding. And I remember once it was paved the regular way. Yeah, and the state, residents and, actually and asked us not to do it. Yeah, we don't remember. Yeah. So dangerous. Yeah, everyone yeah. to sign off on it. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're trying for alternate uh, surface treatment. Is there a reason you decided to go for the, because it lasts longer? I mean, you said it's stronger, but 
Um, what does that really translate to? No, it's not to? a matter of, of stronger. It's just a matter of it's, it's a different type of treatment. So mm -hmm. it, um, it, it it's sort of between a gravel road and a paved road. So it's still The other one was crumbling. It crumbled very quickly. The, the oil did. and chip. chip. Yeah. yeah, it had a lot of loose. Um, I also don't know. The, the one that was done was done when Anthony Vaccaro was here as Commissioner of Public Works. You're talking over 10 years ago. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know what the application, here. yeah, um, for a very short time. Yeah, very short. Um, uh, but yeah, that um, I think the application was poorly done as well, and it was done on roads that never mm -hmm. should have been done on. So. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be used on lesser traveled roads, and they used them on some roads that were very highly traveled. Highly traveled and mm -hmm. to okay. a very yeah. poor reception. Campfire road was one of them. Campfire Shether was another one. Yeah, yeah. just roads that really shouldn't have been. So we learned our lesson there. Um, we've got authorization to submit a certificate of acknowledgement for New York City DEP for the Inningwood pump station. Um, and uh, we're gonna um, we're gonna bring in goats. <laughs> I'm so excited about I this. Am too. Um, <laughs> so we've got these invasives all along Tertia Brook, and we have been struggling for years as to how to take and maintain them. We want to make sure that we're not, we don't have heavy equipment that, are, that is, uh, you know, uh, crushing our shorelines. And it's, it's very hard to get in there once the season starts. Um, so we've been looking outside the box, and uh, we're going to see how this works. I know other towns have used it, and it's been very successful. I'm, I'm excited because I've been wanting to use it. And they also eat the uh, poison ivy. They love poison ivy. So that would be... <laughs> so, we're, yeah, we're going to see how this works. They, um, they've been very successful uh, grazing under solar farms in different areas, um, but... They're very efficient grazers. I know they, they've been used in California to avoid fires because they graze on the brush. There you go. And um, I know that fires have been stopped exactly where the goats have grazed. So, mm -hmm. All right, so yeah. Uh, we'll let you know when they're coming. Yeah, and, yeah uh, because let me know when they're coming because depending on the safety of this, I'm sure kids would want to come watch the ghosts. Right, so the only thing, just fair warning to everybody, that there are electric fences <laughs> that are uh, installed around the goats so that they don't they wander, don't wander but they'll, they, the electric shock is not going to do bodily harm to you, but it's certainly going to be unpleasant. Um, so it's like the electric like, fence for dogs, and right. it's you know, yeah, it's it's a deterrent. But just in case someone decides that that they want to test it, don't please don't do that. No. Okay. So I will will notify. We'll people, educate them, but I'm sure kids they'll want to drive by and show them. So the is there a Are we going to get a picture of the goats? Do they stay for a certain? <laughs> they're baby goats. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they come <laughs> for a certain period of time. They yeah. take and they graze them um, in certain areas. Um, they have to be a little bit careful. We are still going to have to rent some. Uh, um, Brush hogs, is that what they call yeah. them? Some, yeah, some type of mower that can... Like a heavy-duty mower. Yeah. yeah, because there is an area that's too close to the railroad track, so mm -hmm. they won't be um, they won't be there. That's not safe for them, so they'll be in the, the other areas. But uh, we um, we need to take a significant step towards cleaning up Tosher Brook, so this is, this is our step. Yeah, that's very exciting. Um, and last but not least, uh, we've got an authorization to accept the Pocket Park uh, irrigation proposal. Um, so that's... Um, we, we need uh, a new sprinkler system in the pocket park. Um, so $4,700 we will be spending to take and restore that. Um, and Can't last, we just buy the hoses with the little dots in them? No, because you need to be able to do it on a timer and things like that. So to go through the, that's what we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there uh, is a system can be put on a timer? There's a system yeah. there already that needs replacing or is this new no so it, it it is to replace a antiquated system that is just completely but seriously fine. can't we put like you can buy at home depot the little timers that attach to your water and then attach the hose that have the little irrigation pin pricks in them mm -hmm. it's like a hundred bucks all together. Do, do you want to have a conversation? I'm, I'm happy to have you speak with the Garden Club about the um, our estimate was six thousand dollars. They they came up with one that was forty seven hundred um, to replace it. It's there's a method to it. 
I don't know what to tell you. If you want me to go back to them, I'm happy to go back to them. Uh, I'm just curious because it just seems like a decent amount of money for a very small coffee pot. But it's a very beautiful and yes, heavily it is. Um, planted coffee pot. Of yeah, course, with a crumbling a wall that, that they really need to redo, a crumbling mosaic wall. Yeah, I don't know what they did. I think that's something that, that recreation, <laughs> recreation did years ago. Did you do that? Did and recreation do that mosaic I wall that's, that, that was crumbling? And they the, did it and we fired it. That's what I heard. I wasn't. We, yeah, so, it, so it was art center projects because when my kids were little, they actually had uh, the pieces that are up on that wall. That's how one. Yeah, they, they it's used crumbling. Broken, broken pieces of pottery from the kiln and the kids made yeah, a mosaic. mosaic. And oh, they, very yeah, it was prior yeah. to our time. But it's, yeah. it's crumbling. It's not looking great. We need a new wall, a new art project for our kids. All right. Um, you let me know what you want me to do. I'm happy to go back to the uh, to the garden club. What does everyone think? Well, I think they've looked at it more than we have, and um, I don't know. You could suggest it to them, but at the end of the day, I go with their recommendation. I guess. Okay. I, whatever you want to do, I just I just need direction. Anyone else have any thoughts? They were going to pay for it themselves. I told them that it's our pocket pot and they should be paying for it. Then it seems like they probably looked for the most cost effective. Yeah. Yeah. Alternative. Well, it was the rec put out our RFP. It was a rec. No, no, no. This is the garden club, not rec. The so rec department solicited two quotes. No, no. So, so the rec department solicited the second quote because we need two quotes in order to pay for something because of the pricing of it. The garden club had gotten their own. They came to us and said, because we're the ones who have been watering by hand the pocket park because the irrigation system that you installed years ago has died, we will take it, undertake it. This is our um, quote from our preferred vendor. And based on the fact it was $4,700, we needed a second one. I took and got, received the second one so that we could pay for it because according to our procurement policy, we needed to. But they were ready to pay for it. I just felt that since it was our pocket park. Should come out of our pocket. It should come out of our pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Okay. I'm happy to go back to them and, and tell them otherwise. Well, Whatever does anyone else on the board have any thoughts? No. I'm, no, no, they're the ones who are watering and maybe the hose. I mean, every gardener knows about the hose uh, setup, so maybe that for some reason doesn't work as well as this. And, you know, they're the ones doing it, so I'm ready to let it go. Yeah, I am too. Okay. Very intriguing. Ah, and last but not least, um, the rotary was very nice. Um, it took a little while, but we actually um, received 300 saplings. We, they should have come in today, actually, red maple saplings. Um, they're going to be planted in three different locations, Dream, the Jean Craighead George Park, um, around the Duck Pond, and also at Gedney. Mm -hmm. um, we um, are going to be asking the board to approve a 25 sapling giveaway that the Conservation Board is going to do in conjunction with um, Earth Day. So there'll be Probably. a resolution nice. for later. That's great. Um, and anything else? Is the, oh, consent, or is that gonna be yeah, the t-shirt bid, um, Ed, what should we do? I marked it up. So if someone would uh, care to offer it uh, as amended as I've marked it up. Right, after we, okay. after we go into the town board meeting? Okay. All right. Perfect. Great. All right. All right. That's all I got. Okay. So um, can I have a motion to uh, adjourn the work session and open the town board meeting? I move to adjourn the work session and open the town board meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, well, welcome now to the town board meeting uh, portion of our uh, meeting this evening. Uh, Jill, have any announcements? Um, just an administrator's report of such. Want me to do that now? Sure. Okay. Um, so, just for the public certification, uh, we apologize for that porta potty that's out in front of town hall, but uh, staff started renovating the uh, town hall bathrooms earlier this week, and the first one we started with was the handicapped bathroom on the first floor. So. By law, it needs to be there. We expect it to be there about a month. Um, they'll be taking, they'll be renovating all four bathrooms um, in town hall. They haven't been done in 30 some odd years. It was time. Um, let me 
me see. Um, we're all town staff has also been in the midst of replacing uh, the overhead fluorescent fixtures with LED fixtures that will improve the lighting in town hall and also reduce the electricity used and the um, ongoing maintenance costs going forward. We actually received a grant from for this from uh, Senator Pete Harcum. In addition to that, um, his grant covers the replacement of the lights in the Chapel God Performing Arts Center Auditorium with LEDs, which will significantly um, cut costs on our electrical usage in that building as well. Um, last but not least, um, the steps in retaining wall and the new handrail project at Gedney Park was completed last Friday. So many thanks for everybody's patience and for everybody involved in getting that project done so quickly. The place looks gorgeous. It does. Um, and actually, do you want to give the last thing? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Town and county taxes. We're in the um, collection is currently going on. The last day to pay your taxes is actually this year is May first. Yes. So if you, as opposed to your bank, are responsible for paying them, please get your um, payments in. We do hold post dated checks, and uh, we look forward to receiving. Yeah. <laughs> talk talk about immediate response. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, is that it. That would be perfect. Uh, I didn't have anything in my um, supervisor support other than um, I do know that uh, in. Albany, they're meeting all week uh, to continue to discuss the budget. Um, I have been urged that if you have a thought on that, especially the housing compact, to please call the governor's office. I will have her number in the newsletter tomorrow. Um, it's too late for emails at this point, but if anyone has thoughts, they should uh, definitely call the governor's office. Um, and then for the community card, I just wanted to congratulate again the, the state champions uh, for the Horace Greeley Boys Swim and Dive Team. All right, so now we are going to move to any public comment or new business. Anyone here have any public comment? Come on up. If you could just, for the record, state your name and, and address. Until sure. Uh, my name is William Finkelday. In the microphone, so oh. people at home can hear you. Okay. My name is William Finkelday. I live at 36 Twin Ridges Road. Um, I stopped in Village Hall and, and spoke to the assistant administrator last Friday. And my question was this. It was, uh, does the town have any policy and or thoughts of a policy about hiring, <clears throat> hiring local handicapped folks for jobs that they can, they can do within the village government? And I was told that it was a very pleasant conversation and, and that uh, sometimes uh, uh, people with disabilities are hired for special events and so forth and so on. Uh, but I'm more interested in seeing people being able to be hired as, a, as an employee of the village. Uh, I know that it's been done in other communities very successfully. And, it, and it's not an easy thing to, to, to sort of wrap your head around. But I mean, people have various degrees of, of abilities. and. Uh, you know, for instance, I saw the other day in another town, a young man on the autistic spectrum, and his job was to clean up downtown. You have never seen a more dedicated individual in your life. He would go under the cars with his broom, not just push by, but he was committed to doing the best job that he could do under the circumstances. Now, a lot of folks, depending upon what disability they might have, are going to have limitations in what they may or may not be able to do. But... Uh, uh, I'll use another example of, of a person who became like an intern at the town at the town hall, and and she and she worked there for a couple of years. She was very hearing impaired, and, and she learned many many different things, and was able to go on into the into the work environment beyond that town hall, and uh, and be, be successful in finding employment in the community. Um, this is kind of dear to my heart, quite frankly. And I think that uh, over the time uh, when I was working with municipal government, there were many, many, many dozens of people who were able to do this. And, and we found that the employees, with some exceptions, uh, were, were, were wonderful to these folks and, and, and really took them in and, and treated them spectacularly and, and, and valued the work that they produced. And uh, that was a big deal. Now, as far you know, one wonders, okay, you don't want to have to spend a lot of new money, hire a lot of new folks. 
generally you don't have to spend much money in this circumstance. Many folks are on Medicaid and they're, they're, the amount of money that they can earn in the period of time is limited in order to keep their medical benefits and other benefits that they may accrue to them. So, uh, you know, 10 hours a week might just be a perfect thing for, for, for some people in a job sharing kind of situation. And I just wanted to bring it up, sort of challenge you guys to think about it, uh, because I, I think it's a wonderful thing and it would really help out a, a different group of people from our community. Thank, Thanks you. For, Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just so you know, we definitely um, aspire to that. We do have our, our Epic Ambassador Program where we have paid um, individuals to work right now at the Chappaqua Performing Arts Center and they get paid to usher and sure. hopefully the thought is that they would learn about um, ordering supplies and vending and be able to actually progress there, um, modeled after the Prospector Theater actually up in Connecticut I think, and Bridgefield. And, um, and we certainly have had um, employees with different capabilities working in town hall, and we are definitely open to uh, to expanding that and and through that program as well. Well, I think one one possibility would be to work in cooperation with the schools and the special education department to 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 make this you know, the kind of internship possible for for folks that might still even be in, in school and, and, and getting free vocational training. So thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't recognize you with your. Um, any other uh, public comment or new business? Hey, is there anyone online? No hands are raised online. Okay. Well, then we will move uh, to our public hearing. So, can I have um, a motion to open our uh, public hearing on the Recreation and Parks Master Plan? Motion to move public hearing on recreation and parks master plan. A second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So um, you've, you've, got, you've been busy here today. <laughs> so uh, we're going to open up our public hearing on uh, on the Rec and Parks master plan, which was presented to the town board uh, a few weeks ago. I don't know. Did you have a presentation that you wanted to make today, or um, just based on that? I hope people watched it. If um, Anyone has any public comments on it? Ike is on also. You might. Oh, hi, Ike. <laughs> hello, hello. Anything you want to say before um, before we open it up to comments? No, not at all. I'm interested to be uh, here if anybody has any comments based on the presentation that was given a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Or if they've had a chance to look at it online. Nicole, did you have a comment? Hi, Ike. Just state my name. Nicole Roche, 39 Overlook Road. And um, tonight I'm actually speaking on behalf of the Milkwood West End Advisory Board. So um, last week I sent you all a photograph of a backboard. Um, actually, it was a copy of the email that I sent to Ike, which was actually an email that I had originally sent to you folks back in the fall or sometime, right? So um, shortly after the Millwood West End Advisory Board was first rekindled, I was kind enough to come and meet with us. And one of the things that we requested was a backboard for the tennis court that's being renovated um, in Millwood Park when the grant from Chris Burdick that went through was going to have all the renovation. And then, um, here, there was a, a community outreach for the master plan, and again, I requested for the Millwood West End Advisory Board, based on all the requests I've gotten from residents, that we have a backboard for the tennis court. Now, I took away from those two encounters that it was not a problem, and yet it's not in the master plan. And so I would like that to be revisited. Um, you know, one of the um, things that the Millwood West End Advisory Board does is to advocate for a proportionate amount of resources mm -hmm. that the town has. And we actually, in my opinion, get a disproportionate mm -hmm. amount of the resources that the town has. I won't go into all the examples tonight except for the tulips and the daffodils that are so beautiful out there for which we have none. 
in our hamlet of Millwood. So anyways, that's my request that, um, that hopefully the backboard will be put into the master plan for the park. Um, I think it's, yeah, a lot of people have wanted that over the years, so thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. Is that something that needs to be part of the master plan, or is that something that can be just part of regular business? Yeah, I would actually think that that's not part of the master plan, that it's something that, you know, the master plan is sort of more like a general blueprint, and then we say based on that, you know, what well, we want to put a, a backboard on, in Millwood. So how, what are your thoughts, like? So Nicole and I spoke uh, last week about this very same thing, uh, and part of that conversation was, you know, we were finally tweaked to think of the the bid document enough to go out to bid for resurfacing the tennis courts. Um, it is not included in that bid, uh, just because a lot of the companies don't do that as part of what, you know, with resurfacing or redoing tennis, uh, the courts, the service of the tennis courts. Um, but it is something that we can buy separately. Uh, and they run anywhere from 3,500 to 15 grand, depending on, um, you know, the make, model, size, all that good stuff. Uh, so something we can certainly look into. Um, I would set that as a separate cost uh, away from the resurfacing project. Um, it might be something that we can budget for uh, going forward. Ike, is that something that should be done prior to the resurfacing of the courts? Do you have, do you have any information as to when would be a good time to do that? So the short answer is no, because I haven't looked into it that much, but I know a lot of them, uh, a lot of those boards sit on top of the, the surface. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that has to be, is it any sort of footing or has to be set into the ground. Um, they sit on top of the, the court surface. So, and I think they attach to the fences around. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so my, my current belief is that it can be done after the, uh, the court surface is done. Okay. Let's, let's make sure to kind of keep that on the tickler though. Because uh, I think that's something that anyone who uses the courts might might want to take advantage of. Yeah, there's just again, yeah, we'll, it'll be separate from the uh, the current project, but we'll, we could certainly budget for it in the future. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are there any other thoughts on uh, the recreation and parks master plan from anyone here? Okay. Is there anyone online who has uh, any public comment? All right, well, I'm gonna speak slowly to give anyone else a chance to raise their hand. Um, but given that there are no other comments, I would uh, advocate for closing the public hearing, but leaving it open for uh, written comments. For, um, I would say, we can leave it open for two weeks. We don't have a meeting next week. So I, I'd leave it open for two weeks, because this is a, you know. So the 28th, could we? Like the 28th uh, by close of business, and that way we put it back on the agenda for approval, um, assuming that we don't hear anything, you know, mm -hmm. unexpected on May 2nd. Okay, so let's say we'll hold it open for written comments until 5 p.m. on August, um, on August, on, uh, on April 28th. <laughs> really? That would be a long time. All right, so can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so now we're going to uh, move to our, our resolutions, unless there's anything anyone else had. Okay, Holly, you want to start us off? Yes. With the consent agenda? Do you want to do the resolution first? No, let's start with the consent agenda. I've also got... Um, yeah. The revised seven and the addition of nine. But um, I move to adopt the consent agenda um, consisting of the following. Do I, do I have to read all those or do I just say as, in, as described in the agenda? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to retroactively approve the payment of claims in the amount 
$1,576,023.04, listed on the summary AP check register and detail voucher detail reports, all dated April 14th, 2023. Checks were printed and distributed to each claimant listed on Friday, April 14th, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to authorize the hiring of Melissa Amato to the position of community service worker within the Newcastle Police Department at the annual salary of $46,302.24, effective April 24, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to authorize the hiring of Matthew Colmenares in the position of seasonal laborer within the Department of Public Works Water Unit at the hourly rate of $18 per hour, effective May 8, 2023. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to authorize the hiring of Fernando Rosas in the position of seasonal laborer within the Department of Public Works Water Unit at the hourly rate of $17 per hour, effective May 27, 2023. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to authorize the hiring of Patrick O'Mara to serve as a student intern at the Millwood Water Treatment Plant at the hourly rate of $15 per hour, effective May 29, 2023. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to authorize the hiring of Alexandra Fitzgerald to serve as the 2023 Mike Marcia Summer Internship Recipient at the hourly rate of $15 per hour, of which Suez will pay half of the 14-week period effective May 22nd, 2023. All in favor? Aye. 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 Go ahead, Vicki. Okay. I, actually, I, I, have, have, I have a revised one. Okay. Isn't it as amended? Okay, go ahead. I'm, I move to approve the 2023 Chapel Farmers Market License Agreement effective for the term commencing May 13th, 2023 through December 31st, 2023, subject to the town attorney making the revision to paragraph 12 that was discussed during executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Vicki, would you like to do that Arbor Day proclamation? Okay, yes. Uh, I move to adopt the following resolution. Uh, whereas Arbor Day was first observed in 1872 with the planting of more than 1 million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed through the nation and the world, and whereas 2023 is the 151st anniversary of National Arbor Day, whereas trees are a renewable resource and help reduce erosion, moderate temperature, moderate temperature, lower heating and cooling costs, clean the air, and provide habitat for habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees in Newcastle increase property value, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they're planted, are a source of joy and renewal. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board in Newcastle proclaims Friday, April 28th, 2023, as 2023's Arbor Day in the town of Newcastle. Be it further resolved that the town board urges all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day, to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands, and to plant and care for trees in furtherance of the happiness and well-being of this and future generations. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to accept the proposal from Spectrum Design, uh, NYSID preferred vendor. Um, for printed t-shirts and miscellaneous sportswear in accordance with the proposal submitted and attached to you here to provided that spectrum agrees to adjust its pricing so that in the aggregate they fall within the 15 percent of the lowest quote received by the town and further resolved that <clears throat> the proposal received from all county apparel llc shall be accepted in the event that spectrum fails to provide revised pricing by april 26 2023 second all in favor aye, aye. aye. All right, any other resolutions? Yeah, just one more. Um, based on executive session, I just forwarded it to the board. It's from Josh. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I have it open. Got it. All right, I move. Uh, I move to authorize the appointment of temporary members of the Board of Assessment Review pursuant to the provisions of Real Property Tax Law 523A for a term of 12 months, effective April 18th of this year through April 17th, 2024. Mark Tulis, Daniel Papes, and Amanda Goldberg. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Can, still, is there anything else? Was the seedling part of the consent agenda? The seedling. 
the accept the, the uh, allowing the donation of the twenty five seedlings. seedlings. That was seedlings. consent agenda. Why not the donation part? Was it? Was it? Was it? I thought we. To, to, I thought we just. I thought you discussed it as. Um, we can do it. Oh, okay. I thought it was part of the consent agenda. It's just clarifying. It that is make sure that it's okay to be part of the consent agenda, the donation of the trees. Not part of the consent agenda. Well, it wasn't originally, but then um, can it be? Can it be? Because we, we talked about it. So out of the 300 trees. to resolve to add something. Why don't we just resolve that the, 20, that the 23rd. We have there are going to be 25 trees that are going to be part of the giveaway um, to promote uh, Arbor Day. So moved. Birthday. 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 Sorry. 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 That okay. was my fault. I did the wrong thing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think now it's okay. Okay. Move to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Oh, no, you need the motion. I did. did. Motion. Oh, I did hear you. Sorry. He was fast. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night.